Hello, everybody. How's it going? Uh, we have our first games showcase of 2024. This is the Xbox Developers Direct. We should see some pretty good things here today. We're going to get a first look at the new Indiana Jones game, some more on Avowed from Obsidian, Hellblade 2, and a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, let's see what uh, what they've got here in about nine seconds. I'm just, I'm very curious to see what this Indiana Jones game is. Like, is it like a third person action adventure game? Is it first person? Like, what are they doing? Here we go. Eighteen plus. That means who that dog in chat can't watch it. So they're going to spend 45 minutes on, like, four games? I guess we'll see. You'll close your eyes then? Okay. We're doing some mo -capping. Hey, that's Todd Howard. All right, what are we starting with? Obsidian, all right. Do we get a release date for a vow today? Welcome to Obsidian Entertainment. I'm so proud to share with you our upcoming fantasy action RPG, Avowed. Avowed is an adventure into the heart of the living lands, a frontier at the edge of the known world, where you must put a stop to a mysterious spiritual plague and discover a secret at the heart of the living lands. At Obsidian, we love creating worlds with deep themes, dynamic gameplay, and thoughtful reactivity. And Avowed is no different. We set out to blend the believable and fantastical to give players a world and experience like no other. It's colorful, it's vibrant, it's strange. It's one of the most incredible settings in the world of Aora. There's gonna be a lot of great secrets to discover, one of which has a really personal connection to you as the player character, and you're gonna have a great time getting to know those secrets and leaving your mark on the world. And when it comes to encounters, our combat brings the best of the moment-to-moment -moment fun that comes with action-oriented gameplay. You know, people want a new Elder Scrolls. This is going to be RPG. it. But maybe better. Here to talk more about Avowed's combat is Gabriel Paramo, gameplay director. Here at Obsidian, our team's overarching goal is to empower you with choice. So we developed a flexible combat system that allows you to quickly swap from spellcasting and sharpshooting to melee combat. We want to give you the freedom to mix and match your loadout to fit the way you want to play from moment to moment, uninterrupted. For all battles, you can combine a variety of weapons, attacks, and abilities for tactical advantages against a wide range like of enemies. Like the uh, wand and shield combo. It's not just hacking and slashing. You're making real-time decisions about when to use your abilities, powerful melee attacks, blocks, parries, and special attacks. If you choose to approach combat with a one-handed wand, it feels quick and snappy when dealing damage to enemies at mid-range. Using the Tanglefoot ability, you can stop enemies in their tracks, giving you the opportunity to focus on weaker or tougher combatants in an intentional and controlled manner. Cool. It's important to pay attention to the types of enemies you're dealing with. Some units are extremely defensive, some are brutishly difficult, and others you must make sure you prioritize or their healing capabilities will put you in a tough spot. To help with the different encounters you will face, we provide customizable loadouts that can be quickly switched during combat. That means you can play however you want. Equip a sword and shield and charge into battle. Dual wield pistols and control the encounter mid-range. Nice. Or even dual wield wands to feel like a gunslinging mage. Huh. You could use your enchanted wand to freeze enemies 
and then use your offhand weapon's power attack to shatter them. Nice. I wonder how you that's going to work stat-wise. you constantly engaged as battles unfold by creating a balance between pressure and manageability during combat. Players will have ample choices for how to build and progress their envoy in the world of the Living Lands as they get to know the game and the story and explore the many diverse regions. Some quests in Avowed will have you make difficult decisions with profound consequences. Like this side quest you may encounter in Shatterscarp, the third region you'll explore on your journey through the Living Lands. As you're exploring, you come across the bodies of these fallen soldiers. And as you explore the remains of the battle, it's up to you to determine who, if anyone, is at fault. Just the four of us. Manu, Kiri, Naoki, and me. Training under Captain Ruiki. Trying to keep Thirdborn safe. In other words, you're a gang of vigilantes. Not that I'm one to judge. Here. Is that your character or a companion? Take my badge. Take everyone's. Our families deserve to know we fought and died for them. Making the right choice isn't always what it seems. We embrace moral nuance and gray areas, trusting players to make tough decisions in complicated situations. My, my squad and I rested in the cave by the water last night, and as we were sleeping, we were ambushed by those miserable Zorips. I was so surprised, and it was so dark. I just got separated from everyone else. Look, I, I, I can't face those monsters alone. But I have to know if anyone else made it out. Of course he did. Sergeant Asui never has a thought he won't say out loud. So what did he tell you? That Captain Ruiki was sick? That I was paranoid? That I was a dumb baby? I heard it all often and loudly. Wait, if you found Sergeant Asui... So they're not showing us our, our, our choice options here? At the end of the quest, you have a choice. When you confront Private Naoki, if you believe the story he's told you, because he was like skipping the badges like, responses. and let him go back home. You're right. Real battle isn't something you can prepare for, is it? It's not my fault. No, they they should have never have camped in the cave. I'll take the badges. I'm going back to Thirdborn. But if you confront him, if you believe that he fled the site of the battle as an act of cowardice then he might challenge you to a fight to reclaim his honor. Either way, when you return to town, you'll see the consequences of your actions and the choices you made during this quest. Creating an immersive experience like Avowed is anchored in the world we build. Art director Matt Hansen and the team have worked to create a unique, colorful, and dynamic visual style. From the outset, we knew that we wanted Avowed setting to feel rich, weird, and wonderful. We found inspiration in a wide swath of real-world cultures, helping us create a unique RPG experience. By contrasting the vibrant with the dull, or verdant spaces with sickly ones, we can better deliver complex emotional experiences for our players. The Living Lands is a continent of untamed valleys with widely varied biomes, from luxuriant forests to volcanic wastes. And each of those regions itself is a conflux of storied landscapes. All of the regions have a lot of special things associated with them, but I have a deep place in my heart for Shatterscarp. As you're wandering the wastes of Shatterscarp, you might notice off in the distance a vibrant jewel of color. By transitioning from destitute, muted tones of a wasteland of sand and marching in towards a beautiful oasis, there's the opportunity there for life, for adventure, and even a little danger. We hope you've enjoyed this look at Avowed. We're thrilled to share more about the game in the coming months, and we can't wait for you to explore the Living Lands when Avowed launches this fall. So probably during Summer Game Fest, I'll give the date. That's some interesting art right there. Hmm. By the way, there's rumors that Hellblade is coming out in like two months. Here we go. This game's gonna be insane.
Hi, I'm Don Matthews, studio head here at Ninja Theory in Cambridge, UK. We're now in the final months of development on Senua Saga Hellblade 2, and the team is working hard to bring you an unforgettable journey into Senua's unique world and her battle for survival, where we have once again combined high fidelity and immersive presentation with a shorter, narrative-led experience that focuses on the things that we really care about and that we hope you care about too. You see how strong you are. You see how the pitiless world stamps you down. Senua is back with a new quest. She wants to stop the Vikings who raided her village right at their source in Iceland. But not just her quest has changed. Senua herself has grown since the first Hellblade. She's made peace with her past and is no longer in such fear of her visions and voices. While the Furies are still her constant companions, she encounters new people along the way, some of which will value her unique perspective and others who will reject it. Little by little, this settlement became my tribe. In the game, Senua arrives in 10th century Iceland on the trail of the Vikings who have been enslaving her people. In the story, we're trying to be as faithful to history as we can up to a point, establishing a solid framework and then building more surreal elements on top. Senua will face up to giants who have plunged the land into chaos and which in turn has seen the rise of the Joiga, a violent threat that has swept through the settlements that she'll discover. <laughs> Senua will make new enemies and also new allies who will come to see her unique perspective as a beacon of hope. And she'll discover along with us how this viewpoint can have its advantages. Senua is a Celtic warrior who experiences psychosis, seeing things that other people don't, hearing voices and having unique beliefs about the world around her. To bring Senua's perspective of the world to life in a truthful way, we have once again worked closely with Professor Paul Fletcher at the University of Cambridge, as well as people with lived experience of psychosis. What does that mean? What does that mean? It's terrifying. Players will find themselves traversing beautiful and hostile environments, seeking answers from patterns and signs that Senua sees in her own unique way and battling through encounters with enemies that will push Senua to her limits. <laughs> On Saga, we've taken everything to the next level. With a new motion capture space, a bigger stage team, a stunt crew and a new cast, we spent a lot of time planning the motion capture shoots, thinking of what events would be good to bring into this fight. Like, how can we make this fight feel different from the previous fight? We have all new combat for the sequel. One of our key goals was the ability to actually tell a story throughout it. It does feel very different from the first game, but it's very brutal and you're very invested in it. Senua isn't a superhero. She's fighting for survival, and we want the player to feel her struggle in every step of her journey. We want the player to always feel like they just scraped through, just survived it. Mel knows Senua better than anyone, better than I do. Her instincts are amazing, and she really doesn't need much help from me. On stage, our main focus is storytelling. So I get to watch the actors and see all the beautiful expressions on their faces. And then I have to wait a little while and then I get to see that all again in game, in costume, on location, everything. It's, it's a great experience, a great process. Every discipline in the studio is unified in achieving a deep level of immersion to help suspend your disbelief and pull you into Senua's story. We were lucky enough to do a few reference gathering trips in Iceland. You have to be there. The, the sense of scale, everything is incredible. And you see a scene or you see a small section of the game and you're like, yeah, that, that works, that's amazing. Senua experiences reality differently. And a part of this manifests in the voices she hears. She will collapse. She will collapse. 
These voices come to life through binaural audio, which provides a good representation of this type of auditory hallucinations. As we focus in immersion, uh, binaural audio is perfect for this because through headphones, you surround yourself in a three-dimensional space. In the first game, we only apply to the voices that Senua listens in her head. In this game, through spatial audio technology and uh, some extra little things within the game, there is music that is binaural. Every single sound has the potential to be binaural, so mm. everything is spatialized around you, and it's a very beautiful experience. Yeah, the first game is the best game I've music ever heard. Is a strange language in the this game is going to beat it. Emotions, like fast audio design, deep. best game I ever played. It's not only about quality, it's about personality. So when you listen to Hellblade, you know it's Hellblade. On the music, we are working with Hailun, which for me is a personal privilege because I really admire them. We feel their craft, their depth, their meaning in the music. It really connects with our game and elevates it to something really special. We are also working with a heavy metal singer, throat singers, and our very own Furies. They sing so beautiful, and we add that binaural touch of music. So this all creates a very immersive and a very special and unique experience. Our mission here at Ninja Theory is to craft life-changing art with game-changing tech. And that's our aim in Senua Saga Hellblade 2, is to not only see where Senua goes next, but to deliver something really meaningful for our players. My hope is that they will really connect to Senua as a character, and even if they can't really relate to what she's going through, maybe they know someone that relates to that character and they can then understand that person better. Well, I don't want to sound cheesy, but in a way I'm Senua, right? She exists and doesn't. It exists through all of our work, through every ninja. So we all are Senua, and we are creating this character that grows and grows and grows and grows and keep growing and keep changing. So that makes it real. I'm so proud of the love, care and passion our team here at Ninja Theory are putting into Senua's saga Hellblade 2. Our hope is to not only create a game that is great to play, but to craft an experience that leaves you thinking and feeling. From our combat gameplay through to our action set pieces, from our cinematic scenes to our puzzle solving, everything is crafted in service of Senua's journey. A journey that you can embark on on May 21st. Oh my god. That game is going to win so many awards. Jeez. That game is going to be something else. May 21st. We have a date. That means we got to do the... Uh the playthrough of the first one or replay of the first one uh oh oh no we have a surprise what is this square square coming in Greetings, Xbox players. My name is Masaru Oyamada, producer for the Mana series here oh, at Oh, this is the new Mana game. Seiken Densets Visions of Mana no jokhou wo Xbox user no minasan ni ichi hayaku otsutai dekiru kikai o itadakete taihen koue desu. Konsole game toshite wa yaku 17 nen buri to naru Seiken Densets series no kanzen shinsaku. Seiken Densets series wa 1991 nen ni ファイナルファンタジー外伝として誕生して以降マナと聖剣をめぐって描かれる愛をテーマに個性豊かなキャラクターたち心に響く楽曲の数々武器の特性を生かして戦うアクションRPGとしてこれまでに17作発売され長ら
Last year during this conference is when they shadow dropped um, Hi-Fi Rush. Hello, I am Koichi Ishii from Gretz. I am so happy to introduce the newest game in the Mana series to Xbox players. 初期の頃からシリーズ作品に登場しているモンスターたちは私が考案したものですが、中には小学生の頃すでにイメージができていたものもあります。今作では、はじめはドット絵からスタートしたモンスターたちをどのような形で最新化して聖剣伝説ビジョンズ・オブ・マナに落とし込むかデザインの方向性からモデルの完成イメージまでを監修する立場でプロジェクトに参加しました「聖剣伝説ファイナルファンタジー外伝」を作っていた頃から自分の頭の中ではモンスターたちは立体的に生き生きと動いてこれまで自分が携わった作品ではそれらをどうやって当時の技術で表現できるかにこだわって作ってきました最新作では聖剣伝説のモンスターたちのただ可愛いだけではなく恐ろしさの部分もしっかりと表現できているのでバトル中はモンスターたちの表情にも注目してくださいこれまで聖剣伝説シリーズには空を旅する海を渡る手助けをしてくれる頼もしい仲間たちがいましたが今作には広大なフィールド探検に欠かせない新たな仲間が登場します陸上を猛スピードで駆け回ってくれるピックルピックルも石井さんが新たに考案してくださっています新たな仲間を考えるにあたっては今作のマスコットキャラクターになるくらい可愛い動物にしたいという漠然とした思いがありましたその上でヨークシャテリアの毛並み見た目はアルマジュによく似た千山港や古代エジプト神のアヌビスの子供といった具体的なイメージが浮かんできてそれぞれの特徴を取り入れながらラフデザインを書き起こしましたデザイナーにもアイデアを出してもらいながら足の長さや丸まった時のイメージなどゲームの中での見え方も考えながら調整を重ねていきピックルは誕生しましたもう一つの挑戦は楽曲面です過去さまざまなコンポーザーが携わられた楽曲の雰囲気が感じられつつも最新作として素晴らしい新たな楽曲が生まれました BGM でもしっかり聖剣伝説シリーズらしさを感じてもらえると思います過去シリーズの楽曲を手掛けたクリエイターたちが全100曲という大ボリュームの制作に挑んでくれました新たな試みとしてフィールドの探索からバトルまでをシームレスに体験できるよう今作ではインタラクティブミュージックを導入しており冒険の没入感を高めてくれます探索中の BGM がバトルに入った瞬間アレンジが切り替わる様を実際に聞いてみましょう本作はアクション RPG 聖剣伝説のアクション部分が強化されています空中でのアクションがバトルの鍵となっており武器での攻撃だけでなく魔法での攻撃も可能になっていますそして本作ならではの特徴として聖剣伝説シリーズではおなじみの精霊たちがいますがその力を宿した武器を使うとバトルを手助けしてくれるようになります。By the way, Blade, May 21 is a 精霊によっては様々な特性の違いがありますので、その効果とともに聖剣伝説の世界らしい不思議な力で爽快なバトルを楽しんでいただけます。オリジナルモンスターやピックリにも注目してほしいのですが、聖剣伝説ビジョンズ・マナは聖剣伝説らしさを感じてもらえる作品になるよう。小山田君を中心にチームのみんなが頑張って作ってくれていますのでぜひ発売日を楽しみに待っていてください私自身もプレイするのを楽しみにしています「聖剣伝説」シリーズとして初めて XBOX ユーザーの皆さんにお届けする「聖剣伝説ビジョンズ・オブ・マナ」は
今後もさまざまな情報をお届けしていきますので、ぜひお願いします。この夏、この忘れられない冒険を Xbox ユーザーの皆さんに楽しんでいただける日が今から待ちきれません。No date. So again, Summer Game Fest will get a date for that probably. Be a July or August, probably. They're going to end this on Indiana Jones, aren't they? Yep. Which game is this? That we're... I'm not sure which game this is. Is this.、Uh... I know we've seen it, but I just、Hello. don't remember. And welcome to Oxide Games. We founded the studio in 2013 with our decades of personal experience building some of the most beloved strategy games of all time, like Civilization V. We came together to create something new and innovative in a genre we all love. Ara History Untold is the game we've dreamt of making. Ara is an homage to historical gamers, strategy gamers, So, this is definitely、gamers. my kind of game. It features all the depth and gameplay fans of this genre love, where、cool. you'll explore the world, expand your nation, govern your people, and engage with your rivals on the internet. So, is this more、stage. real time, like Age of Empires? So, it's like、with、Age of Empires Ara, mixed with Civ? We want to challenge some of the preconceived notions about the genre, push it forward in a modern, empowering, and truly compelling and approachable way. For example, we have over 100 instruments on display in the office, which are all. Things that we purchased in order to add to the soundtrack and expand the game and make it really good. <laughs> Hi, Dan. That's Dan. We started in his basement. It's been an amazing process to see from concept to completion. We started small, building a robust game engine, questioning our design assumptions, and prototyping out features. Rediscovering what made us fall in love with strategy games in the first place. The end result is Aura, the historical grand strategy game that presents a living world. Grand you strategy? Can rule how you want to rule in charge They use the G word. Becoming the most prestigious nation on the planet. For Aura, we knew we needed deep systems with outcomes that encourage exploration and give players the power to experiment and make meaningful strategic choices while still having agency over their playstyle. We also wanted to explore more in different parts of history and give players from around the world the chance to see the game reflect their unique perspective and not just ours. And finally, we knew that for players to feel the impact of their decisions, they would need to see their choices reflected in the game world itself, not just through numbers on a menu. One of the first differences you'll see when you dive into Aura is what we call the living world. It's a procedurally generated alternate Earth, bursting with life. An intuitive, authentic, and immersive space, a blank canvas for players to paint the society of their dreams. The living world Looks like they're using little mini zones instead of like hexes or squares or circles. The they can see everything from the settling of the wilderness to cultural influence on architecture over time to the thousands of citizens living their lives and reacting to the changes. We want players to feel like they're truly occupying the world, leading their people as they thrive and grow. Core to the vision of Aura is our philosophy of rule how you want to rule. And no feature better exemplifies this than the prestige system. To win a game of Aura, players will compete with their rivals to build the most influential, impressive, and important nation the world has ever known. This is measured by prestige, the player's score that proves their worth as a leader. The prestige system gives players the chance to decide what kind of leader they want to be. Do they want to pursue great works of arts and culture? Military might. Scientific advancement. Hey, they're making the、uh, mechs. In Aura, there are no set victory conditions. Players get to decide what is most important to them and focus and prioritize on those goals while still being able to win the game. Personally, when I play Aura, I like to build triumphs. Triumphs are our collection of incredible monuments and architectural achievements from throughout human history, like the Great Pyramid of Giza. They're hard to build. So, one thing I wonder is the, the civilization devs, they got to be looking at this being like, okay, what、Another、do we do? Another aspect of Aura that I am personally excited about is our crafting system. The crafting system offers a unique challenge to the player that they generally won't see often in the 4X genre. Succeeding at balancing, gathering the right things, turning them into the tools that you need, and then finally getting to the outcome. Or okay, so it has elements of Anno, is what you're saying. 
just changes the challenge that exists in Aura compared to other 4X games. Crafting plays out in Aura at a national scale, with players honing and combining the natural resources they harvest into all manner of goods and components. Those are the foundation for everything, from international trade to improving their cities and citizens' lives, and even manufacturing the weapons necessary to draft military units. We need some the crafting swords. system in Aura encourages thoughtful, advanced planning. It rewards players who can see the strategic outcome of all their collected decisions, and not just the individual ones. I'm proud of the work that's gone into our simultaneous turn system. Many strategy oh, it is games turn -based. have players alternate taking turns and reacting to their opponent's moves. In Aura, all players' actions are resolved at the same time. Okay. This rewards players' ability to navigate uncertainty, to predict and strategically plan for a variety of scenarios in the moment. This system makes Aura just feel more real. In a typical strategy game, once your turn is finished, you have to wait for a long time. With simultaneous turns, generally speaking, those times are very low. You get to keep playing the game and stay engaged rather than having those periods of downtime where you're not doing anything. It's not easy sifting through all of history and picking what to include. For Aura, we wanted to offer a fresh perspective. So we looked at cultures and societies throughout the millennia with the broadest lens possible. Where this approach really shines is in our leaders. Leaders are so often seen as military personnel or prominent government figures, but leaders come in so many different forms. They're thought leaders, scientific and cultural prodigies, and many more. Each leader in Aura has a number of special abilities determined by their personality traits, as well as a powerful and unique leader trait informed by their contributions. I mean, again, to very civilization esque, but expanded upon. Roster, we know players will find leaders that they will want to play and even a few that may surprise them with how fun it is when those leaders are handed the reins of power. For us at Oxide, player feedback is the only way to really understand what you're making. It gives us that priceless perspective that an under the, the desk making hammock? for you. Building the game alongside real players has given us that critical player feedback. In the end, we believe this makes for a deeper connection between the players and the game. One of my favorite examples is when we first introduced the concept of dangerous wildlife to the game. It turns out, in our first iteration, it was maybe a little bit too aggressive or disruptive. We knew we should the lions were killing everybody. One of our insiders made a forum post that was just cougars, cougars, cougars. I hate cougars. Someone get these feline demons away from me. I'm happy to report, based on more recent feedback, that I think we ended up in a good place with the overall threat level of mountain lions to a player's citizenry. It's been years of hard work to bring you a strategy experience like no other. And we're so excited that we can finally see the finish line. We can't wait for players to get their hands on the game later this year. But the launch of Aura is only the beginning. We are going to maintain our insider program after the release date and continue to listen to players and support the game into the future. On behalf of everyone at Oxide Games, thank you for joining us today. We can't wait for you to play Aura and to create your own history. Yeah, I'm totally down for a, a game like this. Definitely up my alley. But it's got to be done right. There's a lot of games that try and do this thing, and they just kind of miss the mark by a little bit. So we'll see how that one turns out. Here we go, chat. What is this game? Very excited to see what this is. Hey, och välkommen till Uppsala Sverige här hos Machine Games. We are really excited to finally be able to share our work on Indiana Jones. Since the first film came out, Indiana Jones has always represented the ultimate adventure. Even today, it's one of the most iconic franchises in pop culture. In this game, you aren't just playing as Indy, you are Indiana Jones. You will see through his eyes and experience a journey that we hope lives up to the proud legacy of Indiana Jones. When Todd Howard first told us about his vision for the game, we knew we would be a very good fit to help bring it to life. I've wanted to make an Indiana Jones game forever. I'd had this idea for what it would be like and the story, what Indy was going after, what period of his life it was in, what kind of arc he was gonna have. And as the years went on, I thought, who would be like the best studio in the world 
to make this, and it was my friends at Machine Games. The Wolfenstein I guys. I remember pitching Lucasfilm on the game and being, you know, a little bit nervous because, look, it's, you know, Indiana Jones, and their response was just overwhelmingly positive, and just that excitement has bled through the whole project, and they have just been so trusting and supportive of everything that we want to do with the game. It's been a long time. I've been a fan of this my whole life, and I couldn't be more excited to show you what the team here has been up to. Let's take our first look at the new Indiana Jones game. Here we go. It's got to be third person, right? Let me tell you what you are missing, Dr. Jones. While you were playing your pointless game, I was playing you. You're wondering if maybe you should have built yourself a life of meaning instead of ending up here, dead and forgotten in the sands of Africa. Myths. It's history. Just different ways to interpret the past. Thousands of years of humanity's thoughts and beliefs scattered and buried. Just waiting to be found. Can't just run away. Oh wow, it's Marcus Brody. Indiana. Watch me. So it's first person. Throughout that's history, just that. Mankind has built sites of great spiritual significance. If you were to draw a line. Through these ancient sites around the globe, you get a perfectly aligned circle. Oh, so it looks like the name is correct. The name was, uh, I don't want to say leaked. It's called like the circle of something. I've had run ins with these guys before. Trust me, it ain't a walk in the park. Okay, then. Let's see if you can keep up. What do you mean if I can keep up? I'm not sold on the gameplay, but the rest of it looks pretty solid. I'm I'm just I'm surprised that it's first person. Patron of the fallen angels. Protector of the Chukumani. The great circle. So the leak name was correct. Do you have any idea how old that was? Indiana Jones is such an iconic character and he means so much to so many people. Everyone here at the studio has their own indie stories and memories. Most of us grew up with his adventures and have been fans of the movies and the character for years. He's a brilliant archaeologist. He's a charismatic everyman. He's passionate and determined. And for us, he's synonymous with adventure. Now we have the opportunity to tell a new Indiana Jones story for a modern gaming audience. Our game is all about putting you in Indy's shoes, letting you see and feel what he sees and feels. For us at Machine Games, we do that best through first person. It's the ideal perspective to bring you into the rich, exciting, and interactive world we've built. We believe that being up close and personal to the adventure is key, making each action feel like your own. Whether it's cracking your whip, solving puzzles... When you punch somebody, puzzles, it better make the noise. Or seeing your knuckles go bloody in a fist fight. All of these See, like that right there, what we hear there, person. that's not correct. But we still we need the punching noise. Moments. Seeing his iconic silhouette with the hat, and the whip, and so for things like cutscenes and environmental traversal, we pull the camera back for a third person view. 
Okay, that's cool. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is set between Raiders of the Lost Ark and the Last Crusade. All right, good, cool. When our game begins, Indiana is working at Marshall College. He wakes up in the middle of the night to the sounds of a break-in and rushes to confront the thief in the college museum. The mysterious giant of a man makes off with what seems to be a historically insignificant artifact, sparking Indiana's curiosity. Who the hell are you? Following the trail, Indiana heads to the Vatican, hoping to learn why this particular relic was stolen, and discovers that things aren't what they appear. He starts pulling at the strings of a mystery, and it all unravels until he has no choice but to see it through to the end, whatever the end may be. Yeah, they better do the map oh, thing a bunch. Role. Stop. Need help. Stop. It's great. Maybe in Stop. We always talk about how clever Indiana Jones is. That had to be one of our guiding principles when we were thinking about the type of game we were making. It wouldn't be Indy if he wasn't using his wits to get through the situation. The most authentic Indiana Jones experience we can make is the one that makes you think first. Get in the hang of this. Sure, there will be some obstacles that will be more easily overcome with the revolver or a gun taken from a disarmed guard. But I think most of the time you'll have more fun and, to be honest, a more genuine indie experience by finding more clever ways to solve a problem. We always want to be offering more solutions, whether it's trying a different path through the environment to get around enemies, observing enemy patrols and using them to your advantage, or using the tools at your disposal, like the whip. It's an amazing global adventure with action propelling you through your journey. We have these really diverse environments for you to explore. Indy's journey will take him to the forgotten temples of Sukhothai, the pyramids of Egypt, the snow-peaked Himalayas, and beyond. We look carefully at each location and the time period the game is set in, and we're trying to make it as authentic and accurate as possible. We love creating rich, vibrant worlds, and in this game, we also had the goal of making it feel like a true cinematic Indiana Jones adventure. One of the biggest ways to do that is with the music. Gotta get that John right. John Williams is the original composer for the indie films, and we're really lucky to have found Gordy Hubb, a composer who's been able to capture Williams' essence with his score for The Great Circle. We also take a very movie-like approach to things like cinematics. We're very physical with our production style. We use a lot of stunt actors. Things like this help us bridge the gap between making a game and making a movie. And of course, our characters do a lot to help bring the world to life as well. Next to Indy, Gina is our other main protagonist. Where Indy is pursuing answers just for the sake of curiosity, Gina has a personal stake in getting to the bottom of the core mystery. Gina is an investigative reporter who has a lot riding on this adventure. She's been tracking a lead for some time, and now she's found an ally in this determined American professor. Their paths are intertwined, and they'll need each other in order to get to the bottom of this mystery. Okay, then. Let's see if we can keep up. Fight. What do you mean, if I can keep up? We always love our villains, and think we might have found our favorite one yet in Emmerich Voss. He's this intensely psychological man. He's obsessed with the human mind and manipulating it. He's highly intelligent and the perfect foil for Andy. They're both brilliant people, compelled by their passions and obsessions, but driven down wildly different roads. He creeps up on you and gets under your skin like he gets under Indy's skin. It's captivating. Dead and forgotten in the sands of Africa. One of our models for Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is adventure first. But in every indie adventure, there are always those moments where he finds himself in the action. That's been one of those balancing acts for us, and we've ended up with this sort of hybrid experience that mixes melee combat, stealth, and gunplay. How you approach any given situation is up to you. You may choose to sneak around an enemy patrol, or maybe you'll just pick up a shovel and whack them on the back of their head. And when you can't use your wits, you got in this most iconic tool. 
Just like you see in the movies, one of our goals has been to make the whip as fun and multi-purposed as possible. We want it integrated into every aspect of the game. You can use it as a traversal tool to make your way around the environment. What if you, you can, can literally snap onto anything? And yes, you can absolutely use it in combat. Everything you'd expect from in this whip, and hopefully a little bit more. Puzzles are a key feature in our game. The spirit of discovery is so important to Indiana Jones. Obviously, there are a handful of puzzles on the main path, but a lot of the puzzles are optional and are just there for the players who want to experience them. Epic traps, small secrets, and hidden puzzles that blend right in with their surroundings. One thing I love about our game is the level of interactivity that we have. We have this world of mystery where anything could potentially hide a secret. The more you look, the more you'll discover. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I want to thank you all for joining us for our big reveal of Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. Machine Games is known for creating these roller coaster experiences with huge set pieces, surprising twists, and immersive narratives. It's exciting for us that we have been able to stay so true to the Indiana Jones franchise and create such an authentic experience while still being able to showcase what makes us us. We are making a game for everyone, whether you are very familiar with the franchise or not. Because at the heart of Indiana Jones is an incredible adventure, and I think that's something everyone wants to be part of. I'm also very excited to announce that Indiana Jones and the Great Circle will be coming later this year. No date. And we cannot wait to share more soon. Hey, Todd Howard. I saw that. Todd Howard just stole the golden, golden monkey over there. So another game that will get the date during Summer Game Fest. Xbox is they gotta try and like spread out their games. So they got like four or five games coming out this year. So Hellblade is the first. And then these other ones they'll sprinkle throughout the rest of the year. So this would be a good uh good fall game. So yeah, uh, for that Indiana Jones game, I'm pretty much sticking with my comment of the minute-to-minute -minute gameplay I'm not sold on, but everything else looks great. Like the environment, the setting, the story, the characters, all that looks, looks great. But I'm just not sure about doing that as a first person. to craft life-changing art with game-changing tech. Part of the vision of Ara is our philosophy of rule how you want to rule. Stay happy! <laughs> Creating an immersive experience like Avowed is anchored in the world we build. You aren't just playing as in the you are in the Avions. My name is Masaru Oyamada. Very cool. Very solid show. Anything else here at the last second? Oh, they're jumping right into the uh, Elder Scrolls thing. All right, cool. Uh, I think this has a timer on it, though. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, just kind of wrapping up my thoughts on uh, what we just saw. I'll tell you guys right now, you can uh, you can uh, timestamp it. Hellblade 2 is going to be a Game of the Year contender. A very high Game of the Year contender. Uh, I think even technology-wise, that game is going to go down in 
you know, in recent history as like one of the best looking, best sounding games that uh, we're ever going to see. So, yeah, it's uh, that game is going to be absolutely crazy. I'm trying to see if I can pull up a uh, the footage on that here real quick. But since this thing is still live, I can't quite grab what I what I need to grab on it. But yeah, the Indiana Jones game looked uh looked really solid. As I said, uh the little city builder that's like a mix of like Anno and Age of Empires and and Civ, again, that looks really solid. It's always scary when they mention the word uh, grand strategy because that scares a lot of people. Uh, even I think it was Who Dat Dog in chat said uh, sometimes it can be too much, 100%. Like just regular civilization, they don't, they don't really consider that to be a grand strategy. I mean, it's still like a massive strategy game, but... It's, it's like when you add in that extra tag, that means that the game is just so much bigger than a normal strategy game. So, yeah, we'll uh, we'll have to see. But, yeah, really, really good show. Really enjoyed uh, these little mini presentations from, you know, Xbox or PlayStation, Nintendo, you know, whoever. And, yeah, everything they showed was really good. Uh, the, the Mana games, I've, I've never played one of the Mana games, and so I can't really speak for that too much i mean obviously there's been so many of them so they've got to be popular right so we'll have to see uh just how good the uh the new one is but i think with that uh for the youtube video we'll go ahead and uh, wrap it up right there so uh thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one